Hmm. Okay, now I'm at the perfect height. All right. Well, hey, everybody. It's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com. Back here today. Thank you so much for joining me here on Tuesday, bro. Tuesday, as per usual, you know, we've got an action-packed show for you guys today. We're going to start off with some news and advocacy. We're going to be having some uh, reviews. I'm, I'm, I'm changing some things. I'm just changing a thing right now. Don't worry. We'll get there when we get there. All will be explained. But anyway, welcome. Welcome to Tuesday, bro. Tuesday, of course, we are going to have some viewer mails in there as well as some getting to know Grim Green as well as we're going to wrap it all up at the end with a very random juice tasting that I just went to Han Solo and picked out. And I'm really looking forward to trying it. So yeah, let's just dive in here to this Tuesday, bro. Tuesday, like I said, we're going to be starting off with some news and advocacy. I got an email from, you know, one of my advocacy heroes, Jennifer Berger Coleman, just one of the greatest people on earth. She emailed me and said, hi, Nick, I'm just passing along this info. If you can possibly put a link in one of your videos, it's a citizen's petition backed by Enjoy to delay the compliance period for the deeming regs by at least two years. I think we have a really good shot. Thank you. And I hope you have an amazing time with your family. Absolutely, uh, JBC. Yeah, of course. Of course, JBC. Anything that you request of me, I will do my best to seriously do my best to accommodate. That's not one of those things where it's like, oh, cool, man. Yeah, I'll try my best. When I say I will try my best to JBC, it means I will actually try my best. And I did have a really fantastic time with my family, JBC. Thank you so much. But anyway, let's get on to this petition here. So this is actually from CASA as well. Um, JBC is a board member of CASA. And I'm just going to read you the CASA email that was attached. It says the citizens petition has been submitted. The, uh, okay, no, we're going to start over. Ready? The citizen's petition has been submitted to the F Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, requesting that the agency issue final guidance or regulations describing the recommended or required contents of pre-market submissions. I know that's, that's a big mouthful. That's a lot. I had to read it a couple times. Final guidance or regulations describing the recommended or required contents of the pre-market submissions. So as it stands, if you want to get something approved by the FDA that is a newly deemed tobacco product, which vaping, according to the federal government, is a newly deemed tobacco product, you have to go through the PMTA process, pre-market tobacco application process. It's awful. It's time consuming. It's costly. I mean, unbelievably costly. And there's no clear cut guidelines or rules or fill this out and then fill these out and then make your check out to this, uh, get these tests done, get these, you know, emissions testing or liquid testing or toxicology testing done. This is all stuff that has not been outlined by the federal government. And basically every vape vendor in the United States, States right now is kind of just winging it. Like, we don't know exactly what we need to do. No one told us exactly what we need to do. So we're trying to do things as best we know how, you know, as far as like uh, applications and fees and testing and stuff. But we really have no idea what we're doing. In addition to requesting this final guidance, petitioners, Enjoy, are requesting that the compliance period be extended by 24 months from the time the guidance is published. Such a delay is necessary in order for manufacturers to complete the required pre-market tobacco application process. If you are willing, on behalf of businesses, please use the industry engagement here. This is coming from CASA, so they are a consumer-based advocacy organization, so everything that they do, all their calls to actions, everything like that is always set up for the consumer and for it to be, you know, fairly easy, fairly straightforward so that the consumer can just, you know, jump in, dive in and get it all done. Kasa says that this is not your average petition. And I know there's a lot of Grim Green loyalists out there that are wondering why in the world I'm talking about a petition because over the years I have just shit on petitions. Petitions are the least effective way to accomplish almost 
anything, I think. Petitions give people the feeling that they're helping, that they're doing something, when in reality, they're actually not doing a whole lot. And really, the only petitions that I am talking about or the only ones that I've ever dealt with are those White House petitions where it's like, get 100,000 signatures and you can make Barama, Barack Obama take a picture of his butt and post it on Twitter. Those petitions do nothing. In eight years of vaping, which vaping has been an uphill battle since the day I started vaping against the federal government and against state and local governments, I have signed probably, I don't know, a couple hundred petitions. I mean, maybe more, just petitions on top of petitions on top of petitions and nothing gets accomplished. But Kassa is saying that this is not another petition. The citizen petition is a legitimate pathway to affect changes in regulations after the official public comment period has closed. So this isn't just a White House sign the petition. If we get 100,000 people, we can make Barack Obama take a picture of his butt and post it on Twitter. This is not that kind of petition. This is the citizen's petition, and they say it is a legitimate pathway to affect changes and regulations after the official public comment period has closed. CASA is asking our members to post comments in support of this petition on the official docket at regulations.gov. Comments must be submitted by November 8th, so we have a little bit of time on this, but don't procrastinate. Don't procrastinate because a lot of my subscribers are a lot like me, I think. A lot of my subscribers are a lot like me in the way that we do things and in the way that we think. And I look at that and I see November 8th, 2017, and I'm like, oh, why am I worrying about this now? That's that's future Nick's problem. He can deal with November 8th, 2017. So I get it. I get how easy it is to just look at that November 8th date and go, ah, that's, what? That's not, that's not for forever, man. Just do it. Just just do it. Just post a comment. I'll leave a link down in the description from the official Kassat email that Jennifer Berger Coleman sent to me, where you can, you know, uh, support this petition, leave a comment. Um, if you're in an industry, if you are an industry person like myself, then there is an industry engagement portion of this that I will also link down in the description below. And like I said, CASA generally makes things really very truly easy for the consumers to get involved. And they've done so as well in this email. They say, choose some points below to discuss in your comment. Share your experiences with vaping. How long did you smoke? How many times did you cr try to quit smoking? What were you able, uh, what, what were you able to quit or significantly reduce your smoking? How long have you been smoke free? What is your preferred flavor of e-liquids? Do you use a variety of flavored e-liquid and why is access to that variety important to you? Have you noticed changes in your ability to purchase vapor products as a result of the FDA deeming rule? Are shops and or manufacturers that you purchase from shutting down. The answer to all of that is, of course, yes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link just down in the description of this video. It's going to be the first part under the news and updates and stuff segment section down below in the description. I'll have a link to where the consumers can go and I'll have a link to where industry people can go. And this is something, yeah, this is something that we can get behind. This isn't going to save vaping in the United States, but what it's going to do is give us two more full years to figure something out, to get a plan. We have a lot of tools in our arsenal as far as now this petition. We still have the lawsuit going on. We still have the Duncan Hunter bill, and we still have HR 1136 going on. These are all huge things that we're using, <laughs> that we're using to our advantage. So this is, yes, one more thing that we can all do insanely easily, and it could actually make a pretty big difference. So thank you, Jennifer Berger Coleman, for sending that my way. And of course, I will link down in the description with both of those links, one for the consumers, one for the industry people. Do you see this? Do you see me fiddling and playing around with my Olympus lens cap? I've literally, since I hit record, I've just started playing with it. I need my spinner. Oh yeah, spin for me, you dirty spin. Binner. Um, I also got another pretty cool email here from uh, Oliver Kershaw. So this is from uh, ECF. ECF, if you're not familiar, I feel like, okay, well, this is something I clearly can't play with on camera because it sounds like ball bearings just 
sprinkling like rain in the background. So now I have to put that down too. And now I have, now I have nothing. Anyway, got an email from ECF. Uh, e the ECF, the e-cigarette forum is the largest, you know, resource of vapors, maybe in the United States, maybe in the world, definitely in the United States, maybe in the world. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I am a member on there, although I have not visited ECF in quite some time. I was back on ECF in like 2009 when there was like, you know, a thousand people on that forum. And now it's into the hundreds of thousands and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. But anyway, I got an email from e-cigarette forum and it was quite interesting. And what they did is they linked to an essay that Oliver Kershaw, the founder of ECF, had written up along with Amelia Howard, who is an expert in sociology uh, of in the sociology of innovation. And they show basically they're explaining why vaping cannot be understood using the same research methods used to understand smoking. Yes, this is brilliant. This is a very good read. It is a long, long essay that I'm not going to, I couldn't possibly, I would waste the rest of Tuesday, bro, Tuesday reading this entire essay, but I would strongly, strongly encourage you click the link down below, read the essay. It is fantastic. It's full of stellar information. There's one part I did want to read here where Oliver says, we contend that vaping is not an extension of the medical science paradigm or the tobacco control paradigm, and therefore the techniques used to simultaneously understand and tackle tobacco usage are wholly inappropriate in understanding vaping. We are not saying that these established paradigms are illegitimate or irrelevant, but they do not work well when it comes to understanding user-driven technology, which importantly is also not an extension of the tobacco industry. Yes, fantastic. This is something that I have been thinking and saying for a very long time, vaping needs to be its own thing. Desperately, desperately needs to be its own thing. The federal government, the FDA especially, they want to put us somewhere convenient for them. They want us to either be a tobacco product or a pharmaceutical product. And we are neither of those things. Vaping needs to be its own thing with its own regulations, with its own rules, with its own research, with its own science. Basically what the purpose of this uh, essay is, is to talk about why vaping isn't sticky enough, meaning why are so many people dual using or trying vaping and leaving or not even trying it at all. It's it's quite interesting, and there's one, there's a couple things I wanted to read off of this. It says, why is vaping less sticky than smoking? And by sticky, they mean, you know, why doesn't it stick as well? Why are there dual users? Why are there people who try it and then quit? Or why are there people who smoke cigarettes and just never even, never even pick up vaping? Established versus beta technology. Cigarettes are established and work well, whereas e-cigarettes are new and vary in performance in terms of nicotine delivery, ease of use, required maintenance, price, and etc. The technologies have been improved a great deal in recent years. Yes, absolutely fucking true. When I started vaping, I thought, and back then we were only using little stick batteries and little, you know, disposable Joytech 510 atomizers. Even back then I thought, wow, this is complicated. This is really complicated, but I had the the willpower, like I had the determination and the actual the genuine interest in vaping to to use it and to get it to work properly for me. But even back then, I remember thinking, "Wow, this is really complicated. Why am I going through this whole like making sure my batteries are charged, making sure my atomizers are working, making sure I have enough liquids and flavors that I like and the correct nicotine levels and making sure that my atomizer is using those liquids efficiently so that I don't smoke cigarettes. Even back then, I thought it was really complicated and I was wondering, why don't I just go outside, open up my little box of cigarettes, pull out a cigarette, no, no fiddling, nothing to do. You just jam it in your mouth hole and you light it up. It literally could not be easier. That is a huge thing why people are turned off of vaping and we have done literally nothing. I mean, not nothing. I don't want to say we've done nothing, but we've done very little to make the vaping experience seem, I don't know, not terrifyingly scary to a new person. There are thousands of devices out there and tens of thousands of 
atomizers and tanks and RTAs and RDTAs and sub-ohm tanks and drippers and Genesis and blah, 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 blah. It's overwhelming. And the reason that we've been moving at this pace is for ourselves, is for the industry itself. We've been so focused on ourselves that we're not focusing, pardon me, on burping while you talk. Thanks, Rick Sanchez. We just haven't been focusing on the new vapor and the current smoker. It, it would be, I mean, it would be a downhill battle to walk up to a smoker, you know, who maybe your buddies with, maybe you're not. That, that part doesn't really matter. But if you're talking to any smoker and they're smoking a cigarette and you're sitting there holding this, this giant fucking ugly, disgusting, cagey thing from Wismec. And you're just like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I've been meaning to go out to Alpine. I heard it's really lovely out there. And you're just talking about whatever and they're smoking a cigarette and you have this thing. How long do you think it would take you to explain what this is? You'd go, oh, no, well, this is it's a it's a mod. It's like a modified electronic cigarette. It uses three big 18650 batteries. Oh, uh, so it goes three are in here so that you can have higher um, amp limits and you can have a higher milliamp hour so that your batteries will last longer. Yeah, so amp limits are important because if you're building coils, yeah, you build, you actually build the coils and then install them on the RDA and you use cotton as a wick. No, I thought the same thing. Cotton, it doesn't burn when it's in the wick. But anyway, a higher uh, amp limit on your battery means that the amps that the load of your resistance is pulling from your batteries won't be too much for the batteries. Does that make sense? If someone gave me that speech and I was standing there with a cigarette, I would tell them to stick that thing up their asshole. We are an intensely huge hobbyist market, which means we like things like this. We see things like this and we go, wow, that's cool. Oh, triple 18650s. Yeah, that should be good battery life. That should really improve your, you know, your amp limits. Does this have a, uh, you know, variable wattage, custom TCRs? Could you imagine trying to explain fucking custom TCRs to a smoker? Sorry, I didn't mean for that to be such a long rant. There's a few other bullet points here that I wanted to read. Smokers who use e-cigarettes may be promiscuous in their tobacco consumption habits to begin with. 40% of cigarette smokers use other tobacco products. It could be the cause that cigarette smokers who try to vape though vape are those more inclined towards multi-product use in the first place. Okay, that's a lot. Basically, he's talking about dual users. The inverse of this could also be a factor. The most faithful cigarette users who try vaping to reduce harm may be drawn to the most cigarette-like vaping models, which are known to be underpowered and, guess, and be less effective at delivering nicotine. Most exclusive vapors have made a trade-off and gave up cigarette form factor for a more powerful refillable system. And faithful tobacco users may not be open to this. Just like I was just saying, if I was a smoker and someone tried to explain this to me in the custom TCRs and the triple 18650 cell amp limits compared to the resistance of your coils, I would I'd think they're a crazy person. I mean, that's not something that I would want to do. I have my whole life going on. You know what I mean? I have a job and 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 girlfriends and families and and working to put food on the table and and doing household chores and you know, going to things and living your whole life and cigarettes are just a small part of that. And basically you're asking a cigarette smoker to give up a bigger portion of their life, more time, more energy and more money into learning how to use something like this. That is a huge ask for a cigarette smoker. Hashtag just saying. Anyway, this is uh, this is going on way too long, but what I'm going to do is stop ranting. A. B. I'm going to post a link down in the description to where you can read this whole thing if you want to. It is very well done. It is very long, but it is full of fan fantastic information, fantastic information. Use knowledge and use information like this to arm yourself for, you know, things like uh, talking to a smoker or talking to a health committee or talking to the naysayer, you know, when you're out on the sidewalk vaping and there's a guy smoking a cigarette and goes, I heard those are worse for you. Now we can have some knowledge and actual information to give that person other than being like, uh, no. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to be posting tons of links down in the description to all of the stuff I'm talking about in this video and the link for that 
uh, article written uh, by Oliver Kershaw from ECF will be down in the description there. So yeah, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap up that news segment. There's still a whole lot going on. I put uh, advocacy links down in the description to every video. I still have the EVCA Heartland Association hearing links down there. I still have august8th.org, which is still a very important, legitimate website to go to. I put as much advocacy as I can into the description of these videos, and I'll include all this stuff. You know, you don't have to do everything, but you got to do something. Thank you, Kevin Skipper. Stole that directly from Kevin Skipper. You don't have to do everything. You do have to do something. Anyway, let's wrap up this news segment and uh, let's let's dive in. It's time for Vape Stuff Stuff, guys. Okay, cool. So last week, we welcomed the Hellcat tank into the queue. This is a sub-ohm tank slash... RDTA. You're basically getting a sub-ohm tank and an RDTA in the same package, but because they both use the same base, you can only use one at a time, obviously, unless you buy two kits, but that's true for everything. You buy two fucking recoil RDAs, right? great, now you have two recoil RDAs. This comes as a package. It is a sub-ohm tank and an RDTA, but like I said, you can only use one or the other because they both go into the same base. So the first thing I decided to you do use, what? Hi, talking. The first thing I decided to use was the Hellcat in sub-ohm tank mode. And let me tell you, as a sub-ohm tank, Hellcat's pretty rocking. Apart from that really bizarre experience I had with the O-ring last week on the coil head, there's an O-ring on top of the coil head that slides it slides in the chimney and it keeps everything together. It keeps everything from flooding. But when those are dry, you have to screw it into the chimney and it just shredded that O-ring into nothing. I mean, it looked like a noodle. It was just an extended clear silicone O-ring. I put this one I put a new coil head in there. I just lubed up that O-ring with a little bit of juice. So when I screwed it in, okay, now we have some lubrication going on in there and it's not gonna destroy the O-ring. The coil head so far after a week of use, it's fine. It's, uh, it, it's fine. I get good flavor. I get some pretty good performance from it. It's not a, a particularly nice looking tank, but it's a fine looking tank. I've currently got this loaded up with the last of my 461 from Crisp Juice out of Sweden. Super, super delicious. Let's just have a few pulls. This is on the uh, iJoy Captain, the Dual 2700 mod, which we could probably be talking about soon. If anybody's interested in that, we can probably bring that into the queue soon. Anyway, this is a 0.17. I've got it set to 85 watts. 4.5 volts, good, it's a good vape. When I grab this vape off my desk, I look at it and I go, oh yeah, this is a vape, and then I vape it and I go, oh yeah, this is a pretty good vape. It does still have the loudest airflow known to man. And when I, I'm not even exaggerating when I say that. Did you just hear the airflow that happened? I'm not even like exaggerating. Like I'm not even putting it right down near the mic. I'm gonna vape right here and you will hear how loud it is. That is a loud, loud sub ohm tank that's loud enough to make me really not want to use this as a sub ohm tank for example if i take this like horizon tech duos this is a great sub ohm tank as well listen to how much quieter it is worlds quieter i mean it's not silent but it's just worlds quieter and that also gives me a really nice sub ohm tank vape so if i have the choice between a quiet good sub ohm tank vape or a jet engine sub ohm tank vape obviously i'm gonna go with the quieter one but that's just me maybe there's a group of vapors out there that are really into loud atomizers like they just love it they live for it they have a group on facebook and it's called noisy fucking vapes and all they do is they is they post pictures of like the loudest tanks and the loudest rdas that exist and then they just like they love it man they, they just get off on it you know and no i, I don't want to be a part of that facebook group because i like things that are quiet that are a little quiet doesn't sound like a jet engine engine like this. So far, all I've done with this tank is use it. I've been using it and filling it and using it and filling it. And it's been fine. I've been having a good vape. I've been having good flavor. It's loud af, but I don't know. That's, it's kind of a deal breaker for me. That, that loud noise, that's kind of a deal breaker for me. 
But thankfully, with the RDTA, you don't use the airflow on the base. You use a different airflow. So I'm hoping maybe the RDTA portion can save this. What I'm going to do for next week is I'm going to put this into RDTA mode and I'm just going to use it. Right now, it's still in sub-ohm tank mode. So I'm going to vape through this juice. I'm going to throw it into RDTA mode. We'll put some coils on there. We'll wick it up. We'll juice it with the same juice. And then, uh, yeah, we'll come back next week and we'll say goodbye to the poorly branded Hellcat tank, which is both a sub ohm tank and an RDTA, except I haven't quite got to RDTA land with it yet. Bummer. It is loud, you know? I'm gonna miss that sound. When that tank's gone, I'm gonna miss that sound. All right, next up here in the vape stuff stuff, we're going full Pharaoh. We're gonna talk about the Pharaoh. I'm gonna give it my final judgment. I have been using this like a crazy person. When I first wicked it, uh, I wicked it bad. I wicked it poorly. I didn't wick it well. I was constantly getting constant, constant dry hits. And then I used about half of the cotton that I would normally use, put it in there. Juice flow is full open. I get nothing but delicious. And I mean, very delicious vapor into my mouth. It's not gurgly, it's not leaky, it's not spitty, and it's not dry. So less cotton is going to be the way to go with this Ferro RTA. Now, in big mode, in full huge mode, it's like a little over six mils of juice, and it's big. That's tall. That's a really tall tank. Look at that next to a bottle of juice. It's basically more than half the size of a chubby gorilla bottle of juice. It is a large tank. The diameter around the base is 25 millimeters, but it kind of juts out a little bit and becomes 27 millimeters. It doesn't always have to be this tall. I wonder if my juice is low enough that I could take this extension ring off. There is a ring, oh no, okay. It's not quite low enough. Ah, shit. But there's an extension ring up here. Everything above this airflow hole is extra. You don't need this on here. It simply expands the capacity of your tank and makes it look really fucking tall. One thing that kind of bums me out about that is I like it because it, you know, extends the capacity of your tank. I don't like it because it's stainless steel and it doesn't let you view your quantity of liquid. I always find myself doing these like scientific tests just to figure out how much liquid I have in this Ferro RTA. Like tip it to the side and try to like gauge how much juice is kind of in there. Look, it can all disappear. It can all disappear into that top part. The bottom part of this tank holds very little juice. There is very little space between the glass and the chimney, and there's just a little a little stripe of juice there. Once you get down, if your juice is down to only the glass on the bottom, you've probably got about a mil and a half left. Which means if I'm running out of the house, if I'm gonna go run some errands and I grab this and I grab my ferro tank and I go, oh, okay, that's juice. It looks like it has juice in it. And I grab it and it's really only in the glass portion. I'm definitely 100% without a doubt gonna be running out of juice. It would have been cool to have like, I don't know, like the stainless steel, it looks good and it's nice and clean, but like a window or something, or maybe if it was made out of something else. I don't know. I, I don't have any ideas for this. I just, I don't have any ideas or improvements. I just know that I don't like this portion up here that is full of juice, but you can't see how much juice is. And you know, whatever, if you're at home, that's not really crucial. You can just, oh, I'm, I'm out of juice. Let me just bleh, fill it up real fast. But if you're gone, if you're out and about, if you're running errands or you're out, you know, having dinner or whatever, and you run out of juice, then shit, ran out of juice. Should have checked. Wish I could have seen the whole juice capacity rather than uh, just the bottom window part. One thing that the Pharaoh does that I really enjoy is you can just pull the deck out with a full tank of juice. You just flip it upside down, you let all the juice go, you unscrew it, and you pop out your deck. It's great. You can re-wick, you can rebuild, you can redo everything you want to with that deck, and then you can just, boom, plug it back in, flip it upside down, and suddenly it's an RTA again, and you can continue using that juice. You're not wasting a bunch of juice if you're coil dies or if it burns and you have a full tank of juice, how many times has that happened? That happens to me constantly where I'll have a full tank of juice and I'll be vaping it and I'm like, ah, oh, fuck. I have to re-wick this. I burnt my cotton or something like that. And you end up wasting the juice in your tank. 
Nope, don't have to do that with the Faro. You can just pull the deck out, fiddle, tweak, press cotton, move cotton, re-wick, dry burn your coils, rebuild if you want to, rinse it all out and dry it and rebuild it and wick it, juice it up, put it back in your tank, and you can continue going like nobody would even know. I promise I'm gonna vape this in a second. Last week we were talking about the airflow. There's bottom airflow and there's top airflow, and I decided that I prefer the top airflow just. I turn off the bottom airflow and I use just the top airflow. It delivers delicious flavor, and it is, oh baby, it is smooth, 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 the s smooth, really smooth. What's another word for smooth? Here's a good one. Velvety. It's smooth. It's smooth and velvety and I, I, it's just great. It's smooth and velvety and silent. Did you hear that? No, you didn't, because it's basically a silent tank if you're just using the top airflow. And holy crap, that makes me so happy. So I was using it like that for a really long time. I mean, days and days on end, I was just filling this tank and using it and filling it and using it in that top airflow. And the whole time I'm thinking, fuck, this is a good vape. This is a great RTA. I mean, I had a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning, but now that I've got it dialed in, holy crap, I love this thing. I love the top airflow. I love it. And then I got a little bit of a wild hair at my ass and I turned on, turned on. I opened the bottom airflow one click. Each stop on the bottom, it's clicky. You can hear it. So I open the bottom airflow a singular click. It just creates a little hole in the bottom, and now I have two little holes in the bottom and two little holes at the top, and let me tell you, good. It is a damn fine vape. Ups the volume a little bit, I guess. Pardon me, it makes the airflow a little bit more noisy, but it still feels smooth. It still feels very smooth and velvety. It doesn't feel turbulent or anything like that. Top to bottom, dude. If I'm giving it a final judgment, I think the Faro RTA is a win. I think it's a great RTA. I think that uh, Rip or who, you know, if Rip designed this, I think he did a really good job. I think he knew exactly what he wanted in an RTA and executed it flawlessly. I mean, damn near flawlessly. Best of all, you can click over to Vapor DNA and get this for how much? 34 bucks, $35. That's at a price that you could almost just buy it just to try it. The Faro RTA has a lot of mixed reviews. Talking to people on Facebook and other social medias like Instagram, some people are like, oh, I gave it a few tries, threw it in the trash. And I'm like, wow, that seems, I don't know. That's, I mean, I've done that before. Don't get me wrong. I've done that before. But I like to give things a, a little bit more of a chance. Even if I get off to a really rough start, I like to see it through, at least until I know for sure that I either like it or I dislike it. And in this case, I like it. <laughs> I really like it. I think this is a great RTA. So you're not gonna need your vape budget hands if the FDA or the aliens come down and take all of my vape gear. Is this Faro RTA an RTA that I would seek out and buy? Yeah, I think this could right now, and I don't think I'll regret saying this, I think right now this might be the first RTA that I buy. Here on this date in 2017, if I had no vape gear, this Faro RTA would probably be the RTA that I buy. I like it that much. I like the vape I get from it. I like the flavor I get from it. After my rough learning curve, I've figured out how to build it and wick it uh, flawlessly. It gives me a great vape, great flavor, and the fit and finish on it is top notch. I mean, top notch. Everything fits together so well. All the threads, very nice. There's no grinding or scraping or anything like that. And when you plug your base into the chimney, it doesn't fuck up your cotton or anything like that. The tolerances are just so that you can slide it in nice and smooth and screw it down. And you can use your, you know, adjustable juice flow flawlessly. And it's so smooth and all the parts, they stay together really well and it's really easy to fill. I'm gonna stop gushing. Two banana stickers. I'm giving the Faro RTA two full banana stickers. I think it's highly worth it. I think it's a fantastic RTA. I would like it in all black. Now that I'm looking at this, I really want an all black. It's the first thing I noticed when I went to the Vapor DNA site. I was like, oh look, stainless steel, gold, <gasps> all black. What? In fact, Rip Trippers, if you're watching this, which you may or may not be, that's cool. Please make 
a completely matte black Faro RTA. Oh, I could think of a billion mods that I could put that on and it would look super dope. Anyway, there you go. Faro RTA, leaving the queue, goodbye, you're done. You're gonna stick around because I like vaping you so much and you got two banana stickers. Why am I talking to you like you're a person? Really need to stop doing that. Anyway, there you go, Faro RTA leaving the queue. Uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this segment of Vape Stuff Stuff, the Hellcat in RDTA mode. We'll be coming back next week for sure, but we're gonna wrap this segment up and let's go over to uh, getting to know Grim Green, sure. All right, so Casper writes in and says, uh, hey, Nick, my name is Casper and I'm from Denmark. And first of all, Casper, <laughs> that's awesome. I'm, I'm, I really hope that your first name is actually Casper. I hope your parents named you Casper because that's super dope. Anyway, Casper writes in, he says he's from Denmark. He says, since we are, uh, since we are the neighbors of Sweden, since we are the neighbors of Sweden, the use of snus is pretty popular among teens. I just wonder what is your opinion of snus? Have you ever used snus? I feel like it would be interesting to hear your opinions since you only vape. Or do I? P.S. Keep up what you're doing. I love the videos. Feel free to use my name in your video. Greetings from Copenhagen, Copenhagen, Denmark. Yeah, absolutely. Casper, the guy with the coolest name ever. Um, snus is snus is a thing. You want to know my thoughts on snus? Here are my thoughts on snus. I like snus. I use snus uh, frequently. I use it often, and I really, really enjoy it quite a bit. I think it's, I think it's a fantastic product. So snus is different than snuff. A lot of people hear the term snuff. So what snuff is, is basically a dried out version of snus. It's a tobacco powder. The tobacco is powder and in snuff it's dry it's a dry powder but in snus it is a moist tobacco powder and it's usually in pouches i only use snus in pouches i don't use snus that's just a little disc you know like a hockey puck of powder that you kind of have to shape and form and sometimes people inhale it although that's more with snuff but people put a pinch in their mouth and this that and the other I use the packets I use general snus it's something that has to be refrigerated but I use the general snus packets and I use them all the time especially when I'm flying across country I don't know if you've ever been on a 13 hour non-stop flight from San Diego to the UK where you can't vape let me tell you that snus could possibly save your sanity on a flight like that. I like snus. I like the flavor. I use uh, mint or wintergreen snuses just because I was a, I was a menthol smoker as well. But they don't add any flavorings to snus. Like you're not gonna find um, you know whatever tropical bro trip sort of pineapple snus. That's just a thing that doesn't really exist. And if it does, then it's not really considered real, real snus. They don't use any flavorings or anything like that. Really Swedish snus is the only snus really that I ever want to use. I started off using those like camel snus tins and they were fine, but eh, I don't know. I wasn't really into them. I really like true good Swedish snus. When you're using snus, you don't have to spit. It doesn't create a bunch of saliva in your mouth so that you're constantly spitting. It's not going to make you sick if you don't spit. You can just put it in your mouth. You kind of let it absorb. It doesn't really create any saliva. Uh, I like to have a glass of water with me when I snooze, but I can use snooze packs on a plane and it doesn't make me sick. It doesn't upset my stomach and it actually gives me the nicotine I need. And believe it or not, snooze is a form of tobacco harm reduction. If you go to the CASA site and you mouse over, uh, uh, what? If you mouse over about smoke-free alternatives, you can go down to about smokeless tobacco and you can, you know, it talks all about it. It says about tobacco harm reduction. Tobacco harm reduction is a public health strategy to lower the health risks associated with using nicotine. As an example of the concept of harm reduction, a strategy for dealing with the abuse of other drugs. So, Tobacco, so harm reduction in other arenas is 
is huge. I mean, that's why there's needle exchanges. That's why you get free condoms. This is a thing called harm reduction. So tobacco harm reduction is things like vaping and things like snus. And of course, we all know that vaping isn't 100% safe. We all know that snus isn't 100% safe. They're not designed to be 100% safe. They're designed to reduce, reduce, what I made a new word. It's called reduce. And it means to reduce risk. That's what it is. That's my new word. I just made it up. You can start using it for free right now, Kasa. Reduce. It's simply designed to reduce the risk of harm in your life from products, possibly tobacco. Smoking tobacco is widely acknowledged as a leading cause of death and illness in the world. However, nicotine itself is not very harmful as inferred from the long history of use for nicotine replacement therapy products. Thus, THR measures have been focused on reducing or eliminating the use of combustible tobacco by switching to other nicotine products, including just cutting down, quitting smoking, either long-term or short-term, temporary abstinence, switching to a non-tobacco nicotine nicotine containing products such as pharmaceutical nicotine replacement therapies or currently generally unlicensed products such as electronic cigarettes switching to smokeless tobacco products such as Swedish snus that is written directly on the CASA website switching to non-combustible tobacco products such as Swedish snus and I'm not like a really heavy heavy snus user whenever I get the urge I'm like yeah I could that'd be cool right now it'd be cool something to do just get some snus going just snus it up for a little bit I especially use it on like I don't know long car rides where I like didn't bring a tank or something or I use it on the airplane a lot or you know if I'm hanging out all day at Disneyland with my family and we don't stop for vape breaks yeah that, I feel, is a pretty good time to use snus. If you want to read about snus, I highly suggest reading about snus and seeing if that's something for you. Like I said, I'm not like a heavy, heavy user. 99% of the time, I'm, I'm vaping. That's what I do. I vape, and I love vaping, and that's what keeps me off of tobacco cigarettes. But occasionally, there'll be times where I am just not, simply not able to vape snus. Snus is there for me every time. One tin of general snus would probably last me like nah, six months, maybe longer, maybe a little bit longer. I really don't use it that much. And the only reason that I use snus in places that I can't vape is because it is a form of tobacco harm reduction. It's not completely good, safe, healthy for you at all in any capacity. Not doing anything is the only way to do that. But if you want less risk, then snus is, is definitely a way to go. I, I like it. I support it. Obviously, 18 and up. I'm not saying that, you know, everybody should go out and grab some snus and snus it up and snooze like crazy, but give it a shot. I mean, what's the absolute worst thing that can happen from putting a little satchel of snooze in, in your lip? Nope, I can't think of anything either. You'll either enjoy it or you'll hate it, in which case if you enjoy it, then you can use it whenever you want. If you hate it, then you're right back to square one. You literally have nothing to lose. Just, you know, if you're a vapor, if you're an adult and you're a vapor and there are times when you cannot vape, Snooze. Just give it a shot. I think snooze is a, a wonderful, magical thing. And I, uh, you know, I, I think it's great. It works for me. It works well for me. It might not work well for you. Works well for me. Casper, I hope that answers your question. If uh, anybody else has any other questions that they'd like to see in getting to know Grim Green, hopefully not too intrusive of a question, but you can email me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just put getting to know Grim Green or G T G G G put put G T K G G getting to know Grim Green G T K G G in your subject line and it will get filed and read accordingly. Anyway, let's wrap that up. Let's dive back in. I'm excited. It's time for more vape stuff stuff. So last week we introduced the Wismec Motive Pod System to the queue and. I've realized that over the last week of using this, there's not really a whole lot I can talk about this. So in order to actually make this interesting, in order to actually use this device properly, I am going to remove it from the Tuesday Bro Tuesday queue. So it's not gonna get a final good, bad, thumbs up, thumbs down right now. What I'm gonna do every Tuesday is we're gonna do just a little portion on this, just a little segment on this, because all I'm really interested in is, yeah, look, there's the pod. 
and then there's a drip tip and then you fill it on the side and then that's it. There's nothing, literally nothing to adjust on the battery. It's a one button. This just slides in here and then you just use it and vape it mouth to lung. That's, that's it. That's, I've gone over everything. The only thing that I'm interested in now to know about this is how long the coil heads last. So what I'm going to do is update every week in the news segment if the coil head is still good. <laughs> is the coil head still good in the Motive? I use this a lot. This is the second time I filled this tank. I use this a lot. So I really want to put this coil head through its paces and see how long it actually lasts. But What's going to take the place of the motive, which we're still going to be updating in every do every Tuesday, bro Tuesday, until the coil head finally dies? Well, I want to talk about this sub ohm tank. I got this sub ohm tank from Vapestin. So in the past, Vapestin has been a little bit hit and miss. Their first tank, the Magnus, was great. I thought it was a really fantastic sub ohm tank. And then Vapestin went a little bit off the rails and had some weird tanks and some sub ohm tanks and some stuff that I really wasn't into. I wasn't enjoying it. And it never made it to video because I really, I just thought it was kind of really crummy products. But, you know, that's the great thing is companies and people can redeem themselves. And what Vapestin has released, it has a dumb name. It has a really dumb name. It's called the Cloud Blaster Tank. Eh, that's kind of dumb. Does anybody else think that's kind of dumb? Do you think Cloud Blaster is Cloud Pla Cloud Plaster? What? Oh yeah, totally, Nick. Cloud Plaster. Good one. Do you think the name Cloud Blaster is a dumb name? Because I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a dumb name. I feel a little bit ridiculous saying it. It's like, oh bro, what tank are you using? Oh, this is uh from Vapeston. This is the <sighs> Cloud Blaster. This is sort of like, uh, I don't want to say super sub-ohm tank, but it's designed to compete with a lot of other high-performance sub-ohm tanks. Things like the Sense Blazer Pro, things like the TFV12, things like the Slider, things like the Milo 300. Big, powerful sub-ohm tanks. This is a 0.16 ohm coil head in here. I have it, I'm going to turn it up actually, I have it at 110 watts on the Leaning Tree Wood DNA 200 mod. Really a very, very nice vape. I've got this loaded up with Surf Satisfying and the flavor very nice. It feels rich, it feels dense, it feels saturated, and this is a true top airflow sub-ohm tank. Your airflow is on the top. I'm not sure if you can see that airflow hole right there, but you can open it. Whoops. You can open it, close it, open it, close it, open it. I don't know why you can close it all the way off. I guess it just has to get closed all the way off, right? Anyway, I mean, I don't know anybody who uses it like that. But anyway, I rock it full open. This is the gold version, which is the least appealing version of this tank IMO. The stainless steel, the black, and the gunmetal all look way, way cooler. In fact, the gunmetal looks very, very cool. I would really dig getting a gunmetal version of these, but what it is, well, you know, it's whatever. I have a gold one right now, so that's what I'm using. Like I said, got this loaded up with Surf Satisfying. This is literally a brand new coil head that I put in here yesterday. I always blew through the other coil head. It comes with two coil heads and it comes with an RBA base. In fact, everything in the package, it's all packaged really well. Everything's there. Your tank is there. You have cotton. You have two coil heads. You have replacement glass, replacement parts. I broke the glass on this earlier today and now I'm using the replacement glass which I'm really thankful that they included and I really like this logo. That logo really appeals to me and I don't know why. It's, it, it's, it's awakening things in my brain and I'm like that's really cool and the, the X and it looks, I don't know, a little bit Van Halen-ish I guess. I don't know. I really, really like the branding of this. I think it's top notch. I think it's cool. I like this logo and I like where Vapeston has gone with this and their branding. I wish they just didn't name it the Cloud Blaster. Even though it is called the Cloud ba <laughs> But even though it is called the Cloud Blaster, it still is actually a really fucking good vape. It's good. It is good. That is a damn fine vape. The airflow on this is very... How do I put this? It's not turbulent. It's mostly smooth, but it has a really interesting feel to it. And I think it's because of the way that they did that top airflow, how it goes down and up the coil heads. These coil heads look really bizarre. There's 
three coils in there and then they have like like shelf thing on top and then there's like a shelf thing on the bottom and the airflow literally goes down and then up through the center it feels I don't know how to put this. I don't know how to put this. This is a positive thing when I say this. Trust me. It's a positive thing. The airflow feels very nice on here, but it would kind of be like if you were breathing through a sponge. Like it's a very smooth resistance on your airflow. I can when I vape it, I can kind of feel where the air is going, like going through the bottom and picking up all that vapor and just kind of pushing it up into your mouth. It feels very nice and the surf satisfying juice that I have in here tastes delicious. It is a great tasting juice to begin with and it tastes delicious in this cloud blaster tank. So yeah, we're going to try this out for a little bit. Like I said, it does come with an RDA base in there or an RBA base in there. It's just a simple, really simple velocity style deck. Super easy to build. I, I wick it like using the troll doll technique because it has a split chimney. It works great. I really want to try out this coil head though. Like I really want to crank through this coil head. If this coil head is still this good a week from now, then we're going to wrap it up. But we're going to keep an eye on this coil head because I have a feeling I'm going to be using this tank quite a bit. I don't know when I started using so many tanks. Like it just happened, you know? Even on my desk, I have one, two, three, four, five, six tanks, seven tanks sitting on my desk. As a guy, as a vapor that identifies as a dripper, like, oh bro, now I drip. I use drippers. I have two drippers right now on my desk. The rest are tanks and one is a squonker. So there you go. Not exactly sure when this happened, but I'd like to see it start going in the other west. I want to start using a lot of drippers again. But with that said, fuck, this tank is, is I, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying the vape I have on this right now. I'm gonna be linking directly to vapesten.com and don't be fooled by the computer generated rendering that they have of the gold cloud blaster tank. On the website, it looks beautiful, glorious. It's just shiny gold and a shiny Delrin drip tip. When you get it in real person, in real person, what? I don't know, when you get it IRL, the drip tip, yeah, it's Delrin and it's really kind of matte and not shiny or pretty looking at all. And the finish on this is very, very dull. It's supposed to be gold, but it really just looks like a dull brass mech mod, which is right, I really want the gunmetal one, but I don't know. It's fine, it's put together really well, and you know what, I'm just starting out on it. So we're gonna use this for a little bit, and I'm gonna report back and let you guys know what I think, if I think it's worth it, how that RBA base is, how, how all of it is all around, but I will say, right now, I am very much enjoying this tank. So yeah, welcome the Cloud Blaster. Okay, can we get a petition to rename this tank? We can really call it anything else we want, Vapeston. Anything else. You could call it the Magnus CB. That would even be fine. Or the Magnus Blaster. Or the Magnus Cloud. That would be much cooler than Magnus Cloud Blaster. Oh, such a dumb name. Anyway, sorry, I'm not going to get hung up on the name. I'm going to focus on the tank. I'm going to focus on what's important here, everybody. So yeah, that's the Cloud Blaster tank. And now, finally joining the queue this week, since we got rid of that mech box, which, yes, has been spoken for. I haven't actually emailed the guy back yet for the $2 sale. So if you didn't get an email yet, good. Nobody's got an email, but it has been spoken for. There was the first person, and I'm going to I'm gonna email them shortly really really very soon I'm gonna email them but taking the place of that in the review queue this guy right here I've been using this like crazy this is gonna be one of those in and out I'm gonna introduce it this week and it is gonna be gone next week this is the minikin reborn as modus has released a lot of minikin mods they did the minikin the minikin 2 the minikin stabwood kodama edition the minikin 2 stabwood kodama edition they've done the mini minikin they did the minikin boost which is a 150 50 watt and lastly they released released the minikin reborn which is a 168 
watt device. In case 150 watts isn't quite enough for you, you need 168 watts. Yeah, you can get it with the Minikin Reborn instead of the Minikin Boost. Why do I prefer using the Minikin Reborn over the Minikin Boost? That's a great question. Why don't we just add the boost to this too? We'll do a side-by-side -side. boost versus the reborn. Minikin boost, Minikin reborn. Minikin boost, Minikin reborn. Aesthetically, appearances, they look the same. It's the same form factor. It's the same feel, the same fit and finish. You see those two buttons right here? Yeah, this one, no two buttons right there. See on this side, just a door. See on this side, there's a USB. There's a USB, but two buttons, and there's no buttons on the Reborn. You know why? Because it's using the Minikin 2 chip on the inside that is actually the touchscreen one. If I try to touch it, it says swipe down to unlock. And what's great about the Reborn version, this is a better version that's on the Minikin 2, and I know this is really fucking confusing, but this is a better version of the board that's on the Minikin 2, or at least an updated version of it, because this one actually has a little lock symbol on it. So when you try to touch it, you try to adjust your wattage, you go, oh no, it's locked. You need to unlock it. So you swipe down to unlock, and then you look at that little symbol, and it's now unlocked. So I can press, let's see if I can do it like this. So I can press 90, yeah. And then I can adjust my wattage down, up, any way I want, press the button, and now it's back to being locked, and you've already made all your adjustments. Battery level indicators, shows you the voltage you're getting, it shows you your resistance, it shows you the wattage you're using, it has a puff counter, and it tells you what mode it's in. In my case, I'm using power mode, which is why it says power across the bottom. Got this topped with the Horizon Tech Duos sub-ohm tank, which it's pretty well known as really one of my new favorite sub-ohm tanks. I just really love using it. This is loaded up with Dojo from Ronin. Great. This right here is a really great vape. I have come to love, I mean, absolutely love the way the Minikins feel in my hand. I just think it's a great, it's just a great little dual 18650 banger. It's got a nice big clicky button and it's got a a nice big display on it. And then on the boost, I have the Hellcat tank. This is a 0.2 set to 80 watts. Both a very stellar vape. I like the button on the Reborn better. It's concave. It's not protruding like this. It's actually concave. It's actually fits your finger a little bit better. And that's why I like the Reborn a little bit better. Additionally, I like the display more. On the, on the Reborn than on the Boost. The Boost has the tiny, old school, it's a fine display, but it's a, it's a small little display. And on the Reborn, boom, you have this huge display that gives you much more information and it's a touch screen. So there's no tactile buttons on the side that you could possibly like accidentally adjust your wattage. Anyway, welcome. Minikin Reborn, welcome. I've been rocking it a lot. I'm going to continue to rock it a lot. I will post a link down in the description Let's go see how much these things cost. Hey, there's no price on it. It says out of stock right now. So keep an eye out. Hopefully it'll be back in stock within the next week or so. But anyway, we're going to be talking about the Minikin Reborn this and the next Tuesday Bro Tuesday. I'm going to keep using it. I've been using it like crazy. And like I said, I'm going to do some side by side, some hot side by side action with the Reborn and the Boost. They are the same. I wonder if I could swap the doors. I bet you that I could swap the doors. Ready? Yeah, there we go. Now we have an orange mod with blue speckles, and then we can have a purple mod with orange speckles. In fact, the orange speckles actually kind of match the orange O-rings in this. Good, see, that's a win. So yeah, Minikin Reborn, welcome. Welcome to Tuesday Bro Tuesday. I think you're gonna enjoy your time here. We have a great time over here. Anyway, that's it. Let's wrap up this vape stuff stuff. Let's do some uh, viewer mails. So we got a couple viewer mails. If anybody wants to write any viewer mails into the Tuesday Bro Tuesday program, you can email me nick at grimgreen.com. What? what did, uh, did I even say that correctly? No. Nick at grimgreen.com. What am I doing? Nick at grimgreen.com. That's where you email me. Okay, no burps. Whew. Just mark your subject line, viewer, mail, and it will get filed and read accordingly. But anyway, Marty writes in and says, hey, Nick, I noticed in your Atlanta trip vlog that Omboy OC disabled the smoke detector in your hotel room. I have 
have a lot of, uh, I travel a lot for work and I have never had any issues with the smoke detectors. Aren't smoke detectors geared towards harmful smoke, i.e. carbon monoxide or something like that? That being said, wouldn't vapors set, uh, that being said, would vape set them off? Have you ever set a smoke detector off with your vape? Yes, absolutely. In fact, if you go back and watch Bro Trip Reloaded, where we went to Arizona, I set off Kent's smoke detector in his hotel room. So new smoke detectors, if you're staying at a hotel that has been built or renovated in like the last five years, chances are they're using newer smoke detectors. And newer smoke detectors don't just get set off by smoke. They get set off by particulates in the air. Even steam from a shower can set them off. So yeah, Anything that gets in there will set off the smoke detector. They don't rely on carbon monoxide. In fact, the smoke detector doesn't even check for carbon monoxide. You need a carbon monoxide detector to check for that. But anyway, it's not just smoke. Once upon a time, it might have been just smoke, but now in 2017, every hotel that I have stayed at in the last few years, I have to cover up the smoke detector. I have to. When I was staying in New Orleans and I was staying at a hotel at the NOLA VPX event, laying in bed, I had a room with really high ceilings and I'm laying in bed vaping a little mouth to lung guy thinking there's no way it's going to get up there. So I grab my mod and I pull a big vape capital, set it off. So I had to jump up, I grabbed a towel and I'm like waving it in front of the smoke detector so that it shuts off and thankfully security never came, but yeah. Be very careful if you are vaping in a room <laughs> where it is not a smoking room, vape outside, vape out your window, or cover up that smoke detector. There's not going to be any residual anything. If you cover up that smoke detector, you can go vape capital in your room, and there's not going to be a residual funk or a residual like greasy grossness anywhere. It's not like smoking cigarettes in a hotel room. Cover up your smoke detector, take it off at night in case of an actual fire because, you know, for safety reasons. But yeah, the vapor will definitely, definitely set off smoke detectors. So uh, moving on, let's see what else we got here. Okay, so Jody writes in and says, uh, hello, first of all, your videos are amazing. I love watching. Thank you for what you do and the questions you answer for everyone. So she has a, a backstory. She's on the second attempt of to attempting to start vaping in two years. She said, the first time my experience was terrible. No one uh, in my close friends or family vapes and the people at the, at the local vape shops didn't know all that much. I bought a nice mod, went way too high on my nick level and my tank leaked all the time. The liquids I got would always be spitting back and I was sick of getting my tongue burnt. Round two, attempt about a year and a half later, I enter, uh, enter Google and YouTube after tons of videos, blogs and forum, I have really great juices that I love. Any of those my juices? And no, I didn't mean my juices. Gross. I meant my liquids. Like, there any Namber juice? Wow, I really messed that joke up. She says, I got a great uh, setup. I have successfully done my first build and I have come so far. So after my long-winded story, what tips do you have for the habit mental portion of transitioning into vaping full-time? I find myself often going for a cigarette instead of my vape because of habit. I want to switch so bad and I have all the tools to switch, but my mind needs the fix. Any help to make me cigarette-free is greatly appreciated. Thanks for all you do. Uh, yeah, absolutely, Jody. So, Jody, uh, you're right. It is it is a mental thing because there is nicotine in your vape, so you're getting the nicotine you need, but it sometimes is a mental thing. What I used to do when I was making the transition, and I don't know why I've never talked about this before because it's a really great trick, is when I was a smoker, I did not smoke in my house. That's the one caveat of this. You have to be a smoker that doesn't smoke in your house. So I was a smoker that did not, not not smoke in my house. I was a smoker and I was living with four smokers and we all smoked outside. We smoked outside on the patio. We smoked outside on the front doorstep. That's where we smoked was outside. So what I decided to do in order to get, I don't know, acclimated to vaping as opposed to smoking is I would vape where I didn't smoke if that makes sense. So obviously sitting on the couch, watching a movie, you don't have to take a smoke break, you just vape. 
You just vape and you don't even think about it. Just grab your mod and start vaping and don't even think about it. Vape before you crave a cigarette. And vape in places where you didn't smoke cigarettes before because your brain creates these connections. And it happens to me every time I go to Las Vegas. If I'm standing out in front of the Bellagio and the fountains, that's where I used to smoke a lot of cigarettes. And so when I'm there... I feel the urge to smoke a lot of cigarettes. And it was the same thing when I was at work, start, you know, working at Starbucks, going out into the smoker area. That's where I smoked a lot of cigarettes. And that association of where you smoke cigarettes increases the craving for cigarettes. So vape in places that you didn't smoke cigarettes. Vape in the bathroom, voop. Vape in the shower. I have my shower is such that I can vape in the shower and keep my mod dry and still vape in the shower. Vape in bed, vape in your living room, vape in your kitchen while you're making dinner. Just vape places where you couldn't smoke, and soon you will start associating these places, like my office or my upstairs or my bedroom or my bathroom, with vaping instead of smoking. Does that make any sense? Anyway, that's what helped me. Um, hopefully it helps you, Jody. Either way, just remember that there's no rules. Don't feel guilty if you're dying and you desperately need a cigarette. Just, just go have a cigarette. There's no rules. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to come down on you. Just vape when you want. If you need a cigarette, have a cigarette. But seriously, try to vape in places where you didn't smoke and you associate those areas of your house with vaping rather than smoking, if that makes any sense. Anyway, thank you, Jody, so much for writing in. Yeah, we have time for some more. We're only seven minutes at what? We got way, time for way more. We're nearly like a th thousand viewer mails right now. So Henry writes in and says, hey, Grim Green, thank you for taking the time to read my email. You may use all of it for video purposes. I have been trying to find a decent mouth to lung vape. So far, I have the eye care and the limitless pulse. The vape on them is fine, but the problem is that I am not getting that defined throat hit that I am looking for. I usually vape six milligram in my direct lung setups. Even if I just bump that up to nine milligram, it can be too harsh for direct lung. So for the mouth to lung, I got some 12 milligram and some 18 milligram Namber juice, figuring that would give me a strong throat hit. I don't get any satisfying throat hit from these vapes. Any ideas? Thank you, sir. Yes. Um, Henry, don't the, look, the eye cares are fine. They're great. They're great little guys. The, the limitless one is not so good, but it should be okay. What I would do, mouth to lung, there are three mouth to lung vapes right now that I am truly, truly in love with. One of those is the Aspire Nautilus Mini. That thing is so tried and true, fantastic mouth to lung vape. The Nautilus Mini gives me that throat hit that you're talking about. Additionally, heavily look into the Mi One kits. That Mi One kit with their own coil heads or with the jo Joytech AIO coil heads, fantastic. Oh, it's good. Where I need to vape it now. Where is it? Yeah, this little guy, this little guy right here, the Mi One. I, I got this loaded up with 18 milligram Glacier Banana from the Namber Juice 5050. I get that throat hit that I think you're looking for. Hmm. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you feel it. You feel it in your throat. So yeah, a new device could give you a better throat hit. Uh, additionally, the Endura T20 from Inokin is becoming a highly, highly top competitor for the mouth-to-lung world. They, it is a really great mouth-to-lung setup. The Endura, Endura T20 from Inokin, the Mi One kit from Mi One Vape, and the Nautilus Mini from Aspire. Those are like my go-to three mouth-to-lung vapes that I absolutely love, and all three of them give me that really good throat hit, especially with 18 milligram. Another thing to keep in mind is that you do get acclimated to throat hit, which is why people who vape six milligram can continue to vape six milligram because they get acclimated to it. I can't vape six milligram on a mouth on a lung hit, but I can vape 18 out of a mouth to lung and my first couple toots you know they're nice and, and throaty and nice and punchy but maybe that fifth or sixth one I get less throat hit 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 you just get less and less throat hit as time goes on so maybe take a break maybe pause maybe do some some lungs some clouds bro clouds and then go back to your mouth to lung and the throat hit should return. You do get acclimated to throat hit. But yeah, anyway, Henry, hope that helps out. Let's not drag this on too long. Let's do another one. Let's just do, let's just do one more. I apologize, Malt. 
Malty, I'm just going to call you Kruger because you wrote Kruger and that's that's a fucking cool name. So anyway, he writes in from Germany and says, hello, Nick. I really like watching your videos, but I always see you using drippers. There comes this question to my mind. Is there a special reason why you're always painting the coils and only dripping into the center of the juice then gets directed onto your coils? I always drip through the center so the juice well fills up and the cotton is soaking up with the juice and transporting it to the coil. My English isn't the best, but I hope you get what I mean. And of course, you can use my name in a video. Yes, I absolutely do get what you mean. The only time that I really feel the need to paint my coils is in atomizers with Kennedy style airflow because I love putting my juice directly on the coil because I'm going to vape it right away. As soon as I drip, I vape, drip, vape, drip, vape, drip, vape. I don't want to wait <laughs> for cotton to do the job in like if I just fill up the juice well with juice like that's all well and good but then you have to wait for the juice to wick up your wicks to your coils and that's a huge reason why I'm not an insane fan of RDTAs is I'm a very impatient person which is why I love atomizers that you can just blow your juice right through the middle and you blow your juice and it touches your coils. It goes directly to your coils because I know that I can just put that in my mouth and vape it right away. I know exactly how many pulls or toots I can get off of it before I need to re-drip. Once you're a dripper, you get into this habit. You go, you know, okay, bleh, now I can do five. Bleh, now I can do five. And that's that's my method. And that's why I like RDAs where you can just blow your juice right through the middle. RDAs where you paint is still fine. Like I'm still using that Tsunami uh, RDA that I got from Geek Vape that came with the mech box kit or no, not the mech box kit. This came with the tube mod kit. And on that one, yeah, I have to pop the top because it has Kennedy style airflow. And I just paint the juice directly on my coils. If I was to do it any other way, if I was to fill up that juice well, I'd have to wait for the cotton to do its job. And then you run the risk of flooding it. You run the risk of filling it too full and having that juice come out your airflow. And that's what I'm trying to avoid by painting my coils. I love nothing more than to bleh. Bleuing is my favorite. I just want to bleh all day. Bleh juice into the middle of every atomizer and see how it vapes. The atomizers that I can do that with tend to be the atomizers that are going to stick around for a really long time. Things like the Goon, things like that new Goon 1.5, which is going to be in the Tuesday Bro Tuesday next week. Things like that Reload RDA, things like the Recoil RDA, RDA, things like the dot mod Petri RDA, that old tugboat, the twisted messes squared, any RDA where you can bleh and it, the juice goes directly to your coils, that's going to be the RDA for me. I don't like these extra steps of popping the top and painting. I don't like these extra steps of putting it in the juice well and waiting for the cotton to take over. I just want to put my juice directly on my coils and then vape it. And that's how I like to vape. So that's why I do it that way. Anyway, thank you so much, Germany. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you for watching in Germany. I hope I speak clearly enough so that uh, YouTube can translate it properly into German or unless you understand English. But I have a feeling that I do not uh, uh, speak well enough for Google to translate my videos properly. Anyway, um, yeah, cool. That's going to wrap up some viewer mail. And like I said at the beginning, if you have any viewer mails that you want to send in, anything, recommendations or questions or whatever, that was a really good viewer mail question about dripping. Um, send them over, nickgrimgreen.com. Just put viewer mail in your subject and they will get filed and read accordingly and possibly end up on this here Tuesday Bro Tuesday program. So we're going to end this. We're going to wrap this up. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to do a very random juice tasting. Also, real quick before uh, we taste any juice, because I know people are going to ask, this is the new uh, Grim Green DHD collaboration logo hats. They're going to be on the DHDaccessories.com site uh, soon, like easily within the next few weeks. They kind of just got done being printed up. Uh, me and Jess, who's just a, a wonderful person that I love to death, um, we collaborated and did this cool logo. And, you know, it says Grim Green DHD, so cold in the night. Or it's going on hats. It's going to go on some shirts eventually. We did rag 
tags and you know it's just a you know it's it's whatever it's just a fun it's just a fun thing and a fun brand in a way to you know support me and Jess and it's just a cool thing and I I really love the logo I think it looks really cool on this snapback hat so these are going to be on the DHD accessories doc com site uh very soon very very soon within the next few weeks but anyway the juice we are tasting today this is some new stuff from time bomb and i haven't vaped a lot of time bomb stuff but time bomb is all part of that same company that does uh buckshot time bomb clutch and Roybot. Yeah, they do all those lines. A few of the Roybot ones I really like. I don't know. I was never really a huge fan of the Buckshot or Time Bomb stuff. I kind of liked the Fuse and I kind of liked, uh, what was the Grape one? Didn't they have a Grape one? And I know that Clutch had uh, TKO, which was really good. Anyway, I'm just not really super familiar, super, super familiar with their flavor profiles, but they've released some new flavors and this is called maniac blue and they opted unfortunately if i'm going to be constructively crit, crit, critical critical yeah sure if i'm going to be constructively critical of this um i hate the clear labels i think that makes uh, a liquid bottle just look cheap as fuck it just looks really cheap it just it just it uh, to me it takes a juice that could be like a prime premium e-liquid and kind of knocks it down a peg. This is this is clear labels as getting into like Mount Baker Vapor territory, which don't get me wrong, Mount Baker Vapor is fine, but they are a bargain bulk juice company. If you want to buy like a gallon of liquid for 89 cents, you can from Mount Baker Vapor. That's the vibe that I get when I see these clear labels like this. I did try the Time Bomb Maniac. Maniac was one of the Time Bomb juices that I really, truly, truly enjoyed. So I'm assuming that this blue is going to be like a, a blueberry bakery, blueberry custard type of situation going on. Anyway, um, Recoil RDA, this is on a new mech mod from, uh, you know, they did the Tailspin kit, uh, Steel Vape. This is the, it's called the Sebon Mod Kit, S-E-B-O-N-E, Seabone Mod Kit, the Seabone, cool. Anyway, I'm just gonna load this up. This is actually uh, the Brass Recoil deck. It's a gold-plated deck. This is a build that Zach Fiends, one of the best builders, just whatever, period, put on here. It's like a frame staple guy. It's beautiful. The flavor on it is just delicious. If I had to pick like the best tasting atomizer that I have right now in my possession, it would be this recoil RDA with this fiends build in it. I'm not even joking. It it changed my worldview at how good it tasted. Okay, well, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but it does taste very, very nice. All right, let's see if we can press the button and get some vapors happening here. Vapors. Yeah, kind of smells a little bit blueberry -y, a little bit blueberry -y. and I used to be an insane blueberry fan. Back in 2009, I remember going to the very first vape fest with like a 90 mil bottle of just Pure Smokers blueberry juice. It was just blueberry, 18 milligram, and I fucking loved it. It was all I vaped was just Pure Smoker blueberry, 18 milligram mouth to lung. That was it. I thought this is the last juice that I'm ever going to vape because it's so fucking good. So I do like blueberries, but I haven't vaped a really stellar blueberry flavor in a long time. So let's see if, uh, main, what's it called? Maniac Blue holds up to the test. Here we go. Yeah, it's good. Super good. It's maniac, you know? It tastes maniac-y. It is definitely a like a, a really rich vanilla sort of cupcake flavor. And it kind of tastes like a vanilla cupcake with like some blueberry frosting, like a vanilla blueberry flavor in there. It's not blueberry blueberry like blueberries it's not like a blueberry muffin but it kind of tastes like if you took a big tub of like vanilla frosting which god that sounds awesome right now i'm not even joking i might eat a tub of vanilla frosting for lunch but if you took a tub of vanilla frosting and then you'd put in just like a little bit of blueberry flavoring just like a splash like a splash of blueberry flavoring that's what this is and i'm so glad that it's not overpowering maniac alone is a strong very rich, intense, sort of vanilla cupcakey custard flavors. It's one of my favorite juices that Time Bomb does. But this, it could have easily become like 
too much. If they took the, the Maniac base and just added a fuck ton of blueberry to it, it would have been like cloyingly, like, like gaggy sweet. It would have been astronomically sweet. But what it tastes like they did was scaled down the vanilla a little bit and threw in a little blueberry, kind of rounds it out. It's very nice and creamy. It's good. This is a good vape. Damn, that is really good. I'm into it. I'm into this juice. I'm going to keep vaping it. Um, a lot of people have asked about updates uh, on, on certain juices where I said, you know, initially, wow, this is this is actually really good. I would really vape this. All right. Well, there you go. Like, I never do updates. I never say, like, if a week later I got really fucking sick of it and it started being disgusting or if, like, a few days later I got a really weird off flavor. If that happens, it hasn't happened yet. But if that happens, if a few days from now I'm like, God, this Maniac Blue is awful. It just tastes like artificial blueberries and it's really bad. I will come back and tell you. <laughs> I'm not just blowing some vapor up your ass right now. If I taste a juice right now and I go, yeah, this is super dope. And later on, a week later, it turns out, mm, I actually really don't like this juice. I'll tell you, of course, I will let you know. That's basically my whole job function. Yes, I will definitely let you know. And right now, Maniac Blue, despite the awful cheap stupid, really dumb looking labels. It is a really tasty juice, you guys, really tasty. It actually tastes a lot better uh, when your elbow's up too, just FYI. There it is. There's that flavor I was looking for. So yeah, I'm gonna post a link. The problem is I can't find these clear label bottles anywhere. I mean, Literally anywhere, everywhere I went that sells Time Bomb, Giant Vapes didn't have it, uh, Elevated, or not Elevated, uh, Element didn't have it, uh, eLiquid.com didn't have it, the actual BuckshotVapors.com website, even on their own website, they don't have these flavors up there. What? What? <laughs> Why are these so hard to track down? I will try to find a link. I will try to put it in the description. In the meantime, I'm just going to link to the Buckshot Vapors Maniac. If you really want the new special edition line, they did three flavors with the ugly clear labels. Um, one is Pixie Ice, which I can't, I, I can't, I can't, I can't vape it. Um, I had to throw away the tank I was using because I can't vape it. It's so mentholated. It's pixie, which is pixie sticks, and then menthol, which is menthol. And it, it really gave it a very strong uh, like cough syrup uh, flavor. Was not into that at all. I haven't tried the third one. I haven't tried Sid, but Maniac Blue, there you go. It's good shit. It's, at least it's good shit for right now. If anything changes, I'll let you know. Anyway, let's wrap this up. I will post links down in the description to literally everything I've talked about in this here Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. Let me just quick look, make sure I didn't forget anything. No, you know what? I think we're all good. I think we're all good to go, but that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget, you're more than welcome to join me here every Thursday. Wait for the graphic. It's going to appear without my hands. You're more than welcome to join me here every Thursday for Vlog Day. It's a very similarly styled program, but we do a whole bunch of other stuff over there like beer tastings, like retro vaping. In fact, there's some big changes coming to the vlog this week, you guys. Some big changes. I had some heavy realizations this week. I mean, heavy realizations this week. And I just have to thank all my subscribers. I mean, literally from the bottom of my heart for being so cool, for being so supportive and for being so into this funny thing that we call vaping, for being so awesome and, and dealing with all of the changes that I make. And I know that I do a lot of things. I make a lot of changes on my YouTube. Consistency is not my strong suit. I got rid of reviews. I did Tuesday Bro Tuesday. That alone was a huge astronomical change. And I lost a lot of subscribers in that change. Change, but I am overly, I mean, intensely thankful for those that stuck around and actually enjoy the Tuesday Bro Tuesday because I absolutely love it. And then I got, that got me thinking about the vlog and the vlog has been the same since I started doing it. The vlog has not changed in four years. It's time. It's time to switch that up. We're going to be 
adding segments. We're going to be removing segments. Just wait till this Thursday. There is going to be a whole new vlog. I will have a vlog this Thursday, and it's going to be a completely different monster. I'm switching stuff around. I'm taking segments out. I'm adding stuff in. I'm going to make it much more fun and much more consistent week to week, if that makes any sense. And I don't mean to be so cryptic. I'm just saying changes. The vlog is changing. And then this Thursday, I am gone. I am leaving. As that vlog uploads, I am flying to Ohio to hang out with all of my friends, and we are just going to have a great time vaping it up in Ohio. So yeah, there you go. Anyway, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Give me that maniac blue. And as always, yeah, let's keep on vaping. <laughs> <laughs>